have to wonder how many people would realize if they met me today. I imagine the number would be quite small that I was a hothead when I was a young man. And that's one of the things that I actually have to say against retaliation is that hotheads tend to take retaliation when they really don't know all of the facts lots of times. I'm going to talk some more on retaliation today on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Curtin. Today is Wednesday, the 18th of May of 2022. Um, hope, uh, hope to... Um, that you're having a good day and so forth today. Uh, thank you and welcome for coming along on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on CloudUp, on my Facebook page, on the Kurtz Religion and Politics page there, on Kurtz Religion and Politics.locals.com, on Minds.com, M-I-N-D-S.com, on the Kurtz Religion and Politics group primarily there, on Parlor, on Gab, on Twitter, or wherever else you might be catching me today. Again, the subject for today is retaliation. Allow me to go through my notes so you will have some idea sort of where I am. I think most folks are maybe not so bright when they're young. This kind of was what I was getting at when I said this, is that I wasn't. I was a hothead, and it meant that when I retaliated, if I did, it was really typically not a very good thing. Take my view on competition then and now. Back when, it was a thing for me to pit myself against others. Today, I work against, as it were, myself. I do pay attention to whether, what others can and can't do. When it comes time to vie against someone, though, these days it's pretty much always me. <clears throat> if I do end up competing with another person, I'm careful to do my best job. More importantly, though, when I was younger, I would get all upset and angry when somebody else could beat me uh, in some contest, particularly if they did so with relative ease. Those days, or excuse me, these days, I work to maintain my composure, but not for the reasons many might expect. Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. Uh, when I get angry, there's a tendency for me to lose control. This results in a likelihood I'll lose a given contest through mechanisms of my own making. It's bad enough when someone outclasses you. It's worse yet when at least a part of the reason is your own mental, emotional, psychological state. Uh, what does any of, any of this have to do with retaliation? Well, retaliation is just a bigger, badder, tit-for-tat game as a rule. A person does something, another person responds with some sort of counteroffensive. Take the fellow who I hear, though I don't honestly know, was a white supremacist who went into a black neighborhood and shot the place up, claiming, as I get it, to be seeking revenge for the events of the Waukesha Parade Massacre. Besides everything else, and there's a lot wrong with his perspective and approach, you're literally taking, it, uh, taking out your ire on a bunch of folks who had nothing to do uh, with the situation over which you're upset. This, in fact, this is, in fact, excuse me, common for uh, in retaliatory behavior. Even if a person goes after someone who's actually guilty of some bad behavior, it's highly likely others who are more or less uninvolved will suffer as a result. It's bad enough, for example, that the parents of the person you're seeking to harm have to deal with the guilt of having raised a child who did something horrible. I'm not saying they don't potentially bear some responsibility for the acts of their children. Uh, the problem is you have no idea what they did and didn't do for their child. Maybe they were what folks would have counted exceptional parents. You have to know there are parents out there people would argue did everything right only to raise serial murderers. Another thought uh, what happens when you go after someone only to find out later he or she was not the person who committed some atrocity? I get the desire to avenge bad behavior, and sometimes I can even make a case for it. Dispatching someone as you watch them try to kill others or violently invade your home come to mind as reasons. All told, though, I'm not a fan of retaliation. Too much of the time... The result is at least as bad as what brought it on. Worse yet, most people seeking vengeance feel little to no better after they apparently get it. So you killed the person who took your son's life? 
Did it bring him back? Did it really make you feel better? I can't speak for you, but for me, I've never experienced satisfaction of any kind out of retaliatory activity. Do I support getting back at folks? Sometimes, but as a rule, not so much. Okay, done with my notes. Look, I start a lot of my free flow with look. <laughs> and I'll, I probably need to work on that. It's a probably, it's probably a sign of a weakness in me. What you need to understand is really very simple. Most of the time, retaliation is a bad response to things that have happened. I can't say enough about my disagreement with the idea of the concept of white supremacy. That is to say that people think that white people are superior to other groups. And I don't believe in race, but let's for just a second use the concept of race and say the white race if you want to do that. I don't believe the white race is superior. Are there lots of black folks that I have serious problems with? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Are there lots of Asians? Well, maybe less than black folks, but maybe as many, I don't know. Are there equal amounts of white folks that I have every bit as much problem with? Well, you know, maybe not as much, maybe as much, maybe more. I don't know. I'd have to think about that a little bit. But the truth of the matter is, in every group, group of people, there are good people, there are bad people. But when I hear about somebody going into a black community and gunning people down for this, for supposed retribution, for supposed retaliation, for the actions of a nut job black man who went around killing white folks, whether or not that was his intent to me is beside the point. It's still, I can't, I can't make a case for the person being, quote, guilty of the retaliation. I just can't. And I can't make a case for racism on either side, whether I say that the black guy is racist, and I know there are people who tell me that's not possible. And I can't make a case for the white guy being a racist. But worse yet is a person who goes somewhere and takes, takes it out on a bunch of people who were probably totally uninvolved with that guy who went out there and killed off, what was it, six people and injured 32 or whatever it was. But you go into some black community somewhere and you shoot the place up and what have you done? I'll tell you what you've done. You've fostered bad will. You've hurt people who are not involved. You've hurt their families and friends. And by the way, you've hurt your family and friends as well. There's just really nothing good that comes out of such an activity. Now, again, if a person is trying to shoot people and you see that they're trying to shoot people and you're pretty sure they're a bad guy, they're not trying to protect others or whatever, that maybe it's time to, to take that person out if you're able to do it. I'm not going to tell you you should. I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't. But I can make some sort of case for that. But when you go somewhere as you know, supposed result of somebody's activities and you shoot up a place that wasn't involved really with what you're trying to supposedly you know, re avenge, I kind of go, wait a second. Look, Israel had a, uh, had vengeance in the in the Old Testament of the Bible. Israel had vengeance, but you have to understand something. The vengeance was well-founded, and it was really vengeance on the person who did the wrong, and if it wasn't, you had no right to it. And oh, by the way, even then they had what they referred to as sanctuary cities, where people could run and basically imprison themselves so that other people were not able to take their lives. Now, the second they left the sanctuary city, it was all over for those folks. But my point is this. Revenge, retaliation, whatever you want to call it. And by the way, revenge and retaliation are two different things. Revenge is where I actually, supposedly at least, try to deal with the person or people who did things wrong. Retaliation may have nothing to do with that. You kill 10 of my people, I'll kill 50 of yours. This is retaliatory activity. And that's not reasonable, guys. I don't care if the United States says it, and I don't care who says it makes you look strong to do that. If you say, when you kill 10, we'll kill 50 of yours, if you don't, I mean, you'll, you'll almost certainly generate bad will in the people who you're, you know, inducing your strength on. But worse yet, the people who are really affected are the people at the ground level, and you're not, you're, you're, you're going to for sure create bad will there, and you're really not accomplishing anything either. Okay, if you can say, if you kill 10 of our troops, we'll kill 50 of yours, now you've got something that sounds reasonable, particularly if you're at war, a little bit reasonable. I'm still questioning that you should kill 50 for 10. 
10 for 10, an eye for an eye, I guess I can sort of understand. From my perspective, I'm really not interested in retaliation these days. You kill somebody important to me and I'm going to be sad and I'm going to be heartbroken and it's going to be an unfortunate thing. And I can imagine that anybody else would feel the same way. From my perspective, I am accomplishing basically nothing by trying to retaliate in any way. Like I say, even to avenge that individual, I believe that I'm, that I'm doing something that's not really worthwhile. Okay. This has been the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt, and today is Wednesday, the 18th of May of 2022. That means tomorrow will be Thursday, today being that middle of the weekday. Tomorrow the, uh, will be Thursday, the 19th of May of 2022, working towards that weekend evermore. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on CloudHub. Uh, on my Facebook page, that would be the Kurtz Religion and Politics page there. On Locals.com, Kurtz Religion and Politics.Locals.com. On Minds, M-I-N-D-S.com, primarily on the Religion and Politics group. Sometimes you'll see me on Let's Talk Autism, but usually that's only when it's particularly an autis- autism subject that I'm talking about. Sometimes I'll put things that are sort of uh, obtusely related. On Parlor, on Gab, or on Twitter... Uh, subject for today has been retaliation, and tomorrow we're going to talk about making a living, and I want to talk about the idea of working for the man, which is something that I hear a lot of younger folks saying is just such a terrible thing, and I want to kind of get into that and explain why maybe there are some people who are more than a little bit confused about that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you for coming along today. I hope your day is going well. Hope things are going well for you and continue to do so. And hopefully we will see you again on Thursday, the 19th of May's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. And that will be obviously on tomorrow. Have a wonderful day and hopefully we will see you then. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This podcast was created on Wednesday, the 18th of May of 2022. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching today's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. Don't forget to come back tomorrow uh, to check out the next one. Remember, on various platforms, primarily Rumble, YouTube, BitChute, and CloudHub, and the audio podcast, you can subscribe to my content. For the audio podcast, you probably want to use Apple, Google, or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. In order to find me on those platforms, you can go to the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels on Rumble, YouTube, BitChute, and CloudHub. You can also get to my content on Facebook by finding the Kurtz Religion and Politics page there. Minds, M-I-N-D-S dot com, uh, you, where you will find me at the Kurtz Religion and Politics group. And Kurtz Religion and Politics dot locals dot com as well. You can look there. I post my daily video on various social media sites. Really only about three, Parlor, Gab, and Twitter at present. I am at KP Schubert on each of them. You can find me under them and you can find the videos under me. Uh, you should be able to find my podcasts on Google and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It's also on podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts with an S dot K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T dot com. Uh, if, if you're looking for me on various of the podcast sites, you probably want to search Kurt's Religion and Politics, not the Daily Summation. Keep in mind, you can subscribe to my content various on various places that I put it. Uh, all constructive feedback is welcome. You can like, dislike, add a rumble, or give whatever feedback is available on any of the platforms that you can do such things. You can add, also add a comment on what I put there. Unless you're advertising or doing something that I believe will harm others, I'll leave your comments out there even if I don't agree with or understand them. I will try to let you know I've seen them when possible and may reply if I feel it's reasonable, appropriate, and possible, of course. Thanks again for viewing this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Politics. Don't forget to come back again for tomorrow's as well.